so thanks, Neeraj. Uh, you know, partly right. Uh, so uh, I'd say I answer the question in three parts. First, uh, I think uh, we take, took some conscious calls this quarter on the top line um, to uh, prune customers who are not that profitable uh, or product lines which are not profitable. So that brought down, especially in the wind and some in the railway segments, we brought down, which brought down our uh, our top line growth, uh, but increased our profit a bit. Uh, but that was offset by um, the profit was offset by increase in traded products where the costs have actually gone up. Traded products being other manufacturing plants of SKF globally, uh, where we're importing from, and uh, uh, the cost of those have gone up, which has dropped our margin. Uh, but if you look at a long-term trajectory, nothing changes. We have consistently over the last four years delivered 12% plus CAGR of uh, top-line growth, 17%, um, uh, almost 17% of uh, PVD growth, CAGR. Uh, so uh, our quarter doesn't change our trajectory, quarter doesn't change our, uh, uh, our, uh, our strategy. Got it. So, okay, j just trying to understand this, when we're talking about uh, you consciously taking a decision to prune down on customers which uh, are not profitable, so therefore you are effectively telling me two things here, that one, there is enough business opportunity, even if you prune down customers, to clock in that 12, 15%, whatever the number of growth that you have in mind over a long term in FY25 itself, never mind the one, one quarter miss, and that margins which went down this quarter because of the higher traded products, you will eventually have the ability to take it higher because I'm guessing you've put yeah. down the lower margin customers, effectively your margin should inch higher. Right, so Neeraj, you're exactly right. So this is a blip in this quarter. We will see uptake in it uh, on both the top line and the bottom line in subsequent quarters. Uh, just to give you an example, this quarter also, we have seen in the heavy industry, uh, the uh, metals industry, which are dri infrastructure driven, um, we've seen almost 25% uh, plus growth um, in our business. So there are pockets of growth here. There are pockets of, uh, um, of high, uh, high profitable growth. Uh, and uh, even things like wind and railways, while this quarter was slow, but they, we will see profitable growth in the next few quarters. Got it. So, uh, uh, Mr. Vasudevan, you, you're taking over at a time when there is a new five-year term lot of emphasis on capex infrastructure the budgets around railways etc don't seem to have changed too much maybe no announcements per se but it seems that those sectors continue to gain uh, move along the path charted for them over the last few years as well um, how do you see uh, your divvying up your resources and your production and your manufacturing between uh, the newer opportunities versus themes that have been continuing because like you said you're making some changes so we are unaware of what industry contributed to the low margin thing what industry contributed to the higher margin thing yeah now I, I think we'll make some uh, make some changes some of the traditional industries are still big for us being in the sense you know around 10 percent contribution overall they will continue but if you take uh, with an automotive evs is still very small but um, obviously, we have to put more resources against that to develop products which suit that market. We also have to uh, uh, build our sales team in that, but we won't do it disproportionate um, to where we see the growth and contribution of that in the future. Some of our traditional, even within automotive, two-wheeler and uh, um, uh, four-wheeler markets or commercial vehicle markets are important that we have to protect our base and continue to grow there. Same in the infrastructure sphere areas, right? We will continue to focus on that, but there'll be emerging things coming. In the next five years, India may see semiconductor plants. We have, uh, SKF has some excellent products for those. High-speed machinery, right, coming up as manufacturing increases. Those are all emerging markets, and we will continue to invest in it. Um, uh, but in terms of full shift, it will not happen. Okay, okay. But, but so, so therefore, let's assume that by virtue of the a brand name and the product suite that you have on offer with the technology on the products that you may have, you might be the port of first call, let's assume that. And if we work with that assumption, my question to you therefore is, that let's us, even if the five year trajectory you stick between 10, 12, 14, whatever that number might be, CAGR, uh, will you be able to do it at better operational metrics? Because Q4, for example, due to favorable pricing, your margins really got a bit of a bump up. You yeah, put, yeah. They've come off a little bit, but is the longer term trajectory higher on operational metrics? 
So I'd say, yeah, we'll sustain and continue to grow the margin. And the margin will be driven by many things. One is increased localization. Uh, we have increased even in, uh, uh, from last year to, uh, uh, to this year, we're seeing uh, almost a 10 percentage more of localized products being sold into the market, which will improve our margin fundamentally. Uh, we will also see, while well, it will make us more competitive, but it will also improve our margin. We will also do this, uh, continuously look at what we spoke about in terms of pruning and saying, how do we manage our portfolio to make sure we are focused on the most, uh, more profitable customers. Manufacturing, one of our strengths, that is a continuous improvement exercise. It is uh, about making many small improvements continuously so that our costs of manufacturing come down. So those are the actions which we we'll continue to take. Got it. Uh, I would love, just moving away from SKF for a bit, but not entirely, I would love to understand from you, where do you see or which industries do you see um, the best uh, demand sound bites from currently? Because there was an election quarter, there is a new government, there are some changes that might be there in priorities, who knows. I'm trying to understand what is sounding business as usual or BAU, and where is it that you believe, or where is it that you are sensing higher demand from? I would say uh, uh, four sectors, uh, and this is probably more traditional. Um, uh, the uh, metals, mining, uh, and uh, cement, driven largely by the infrastructure spending that will continue. Um, I would say uh, that is one, one area. Um, the second would be in, uh, uh, in terms of growth, I'm not talking about uh, volume, EVs, uh, both in two-wheelers and four-wheelers, we will continue to see some growth. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then uh, renewables. Um, I think railways is kind of lumpy, uh, but uh, we'll continue to watch out. Within railways, high-speed trains uh, like the Vande Bharat or Train 18 are uh, areas of our forte's for SKF, and we will continue to kind of uh, uh, gain market share there, uh, continue to invest in new technology development. Got it. So industrials and light vehicles, of course, helped you in quarter four as well, and you believe those two continue to be the the areas where the demand might be strong? I would say so, yeah. Got it, okay. Uh, sorry, moving from margins to revenue to back to margins or, 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 or supply chain issues a bit, if I can. Maybe not margins really, but a lot of companies that we spoke to mentioned about uh, uh, higher shipping costs uh, and, and, and slightly dis slight disruption in the supplies because of what's happening in the Middle East. Is that something that impacted you as well by any chance in the quarter, or is that something that is that might impact, if you will? So we did. We did have a higher impact of it, right? Um, um, we, uh, I would say, less so on margin. It's small. Uh, uh, there is some contribution. Luckily, you know, we are manufacturing almost 60 plus percent locally, so only 40 percent is imported. So, uh, but that 40 percent, I'd say, the impact has been more on availability than on margin. So if anything, it has been delayed deliveries of a product rather than on the margin itself. Okay, and I believe uh, you and 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 the, and, and the parent body, uh, the parent company, uh, I, I believe you've made it known enough number of times that uh, there is a high focus on India, focus on R and D spends as well. Um, I would love to understand from you uh, for SKF India localization and made in India, something that you referred to, uh, some blueprint of that. And is there a sense that, I mean, because a lot of other MNC peers of yours tell me this, that they are sensing a higher sourcing uh, from made in India products for the rest of the world by their global parents. I'm trying to, it may or may not be in your case, but I'm just trying to understand. No, it's true, right? Uh, I think there's, um, uh, first of all, I think it's a perfect uh, storm for India. Um, I think with, uh, uh, with increasing uh, geopolitical tension, uh, the China plus one coming up um, and uh, uh, the increasing awareness for awareness and recognition for India's manufacturing strength. There's clearly a drive to set up more manufacturing here. Uh, interest from customers to say, um, can, you, can you make it in India and send it to us, whether it's in Europe or in America. But let's not also ignore the Southeast Asia, Australia market where, again, there is a significant amount of opportunity for us to export. Uh, from SKF India perspective, um, we continue on that path of localization. Uh, my philosophy on this is kind of let's get, uh, let's localize to make sure that we win in the local market. Um, 
if we win the local market, we will be competitive in the global value chains also. So we will get natural pull to, uh, from other, um, other countries uh, to be able to, uh, able to sell to them. As far as the parent is concerned, there is, uh, uh, you know, it's a competitive value chain in the sense if America finds the most competitive place to manufacture a product and believes India is the most competitive place, they will buy from there. That's the philosophy we follow. And so we sell to our other entities also, um, the parent uh, parent company entities. Uh, we, uh, I would say uh, that, is, that is something which we will continue to do and continue to strive to be the best competitive manufacturer. Yeah, more, well, most certainly and, and completely understandable as well. Um, one, one final word, what are the risks uh, to, to uh, this growth numbers that you've alluded to? Because, I mean, uh, you, you've been conservative, you've in the past as a company, in the last four or five years or maybe before that, at times under-promised and over-delivered, which is a great thing. I'm just trying to, I'm guessing that you are being conservative or cautiously optimistic right now as well. But what's the risk to even that? I would say, you know, it's the, it's the standard things, right? There's obviously geopolitical risks, right? Um, I would say, uh, you know, uh, various things like even uh, um, elections in the U.S. could move uh, things one way or the other in terms of our export, right? Um, I'm really glad that with the stability of the government and the renew and the continued focus on uh, on some of the areas they're focusing on with, uh, is continuing, all right? So I would say from an operational perspective within India, um, uh, I don't see much risk. Uh, I would say it's much more of a geopolitical risk. Now, if, um, if America or uh, some of European countries go into recession, um, then it could change the game because investment flow into India would decrease. And uh, that could change kind of our investment uh, in new capacity also, uh, the pace of investment in new capacity also.